Welcome to Clubin's audio conference and good morning. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. Later, we will hold a question and answer session when further instructions will be given. Should you require assistance during this call, please press star zero to reach the operator. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded and broadcast live via webcast, and you may access it at cast.communicacy.com.br slash clubbing slash 4Q19, where you also find the presentation for download. Before you proceed, we would like to clarify the forward-looking statements that might be made during this call in relation to Clubbing's business outlooks, projections, operating and financial targets, and potential growth should be understood as mere assumptions based on the company's management's expectations in relation to the future of Clubbing. Such expectations are highly dependent on market conditions, on the overall economic performance of the country, of the industry, and on international markets. Therefore, they are subject to change. With us today in Sao Paulo, Mr. Cristiano Teixeira, Mr. Marcos Ivo, and officers of the company. Mr. Teixeira will comment on the company's performance during the fourth quarter of 19, and after that, the officers will be available to answer any questions you might have. Now I would like to turn the floor to Mr. Teixeira. Please, Mr. Teixeira. Welcome to the Clubbing's results call for the fourth quarter of 2019. I would like to start reminding you, Clubbing Day in November, you were there in person, and after that, thousands of people have followed this via YouTube. When I said that Clubbing was at a strong phase of shipping of packaging, especially corrugated boxes, the scenario that I commented then our, uh, everything is then reflected now in this fourth quarter. Just like packaging, our papers for packaging also had great volumes of shipping, especially coated boards, which, as I have been saying, are the main alternative product in the world to replace single-use plastic packaging. We also had significant increases in the volume of pulp, and craft liner papers. I also would like to highlight the good works in Puma 2 project with 20% of the first stage already concluded. As many of you know, this is our major ongoing project. Therefore, what I would like to tell you is that Clubin's attributes such as operating excellence, cost discipline, the capacity to deliver what we promise and the credibility of being one of the most sustainable companies in the world that is always aiming for innovation in planted areas as well as innovation in products and solutions that are more sustainable. All of that characteristics and many others turn clubbing a flexible, dynamic company with a wonderful potential to grow. Now I turn the floor to Marcus Ivo that will discuss the financial results and after that, me and the other officers of Clubin will be available to address your questions. Thank you very much, Cristiano. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for being with us in this Clubin's conference call. The last quarter of 2019 was marked by a good operating performance in all of Clubin's units, with sound production and sales volumes cost at good levels, and also the consolidation of the company's DAS extension profile. Among the main highlights I should mention, the packaging net revenue totaling 688 million rails in the quarter, up 9% in the annual comparison. The good operating performance of all units, which was reflected on the total cash cost per ton, down 2% vis-a-vis the same period of 2018 and the average that maturity, which increased from four years in 2018 to eight years by the end of 2019. Now on page three, total sales volume reached 927,000 tons in the fourth quarter of 2019, 8% higher than the same period of 2018. We should stress the growth in all of the clubbing's lines of business. Net revenue in the quarter was 2.7 billion rails, 
down 3% vis-a-vis for Q18. That was because of the challenging prices scenario for pulp and craft liner, which was partially offset by a higher sales volume. Clubin, once again, thanks to its flexibility in products and markets, has increased its domestic sales market share in the quarter, moving from 53% in 2018 to 59% in 2019. In the fourth quarter of the year, the adjusted EBITDA was 965 million reals with an EBITDA margin of 36%. Now on page four, I will turn to our business unit highlights. In our third quarter call, we anticipated our expectation about the strong levels of pulp shipment for the fourth quarter of 19, which in fact has happened. Pulp sales totaled 435,000 tons in the quarter, the highest quarterly shipment volume since our pulp unit started up in 2016. I should also stress the domestic market share increase in pulp sales mix representing then 29% of sales in the quarter. This performance is part of the distribution strategy after the termination of the supplying agreement with Susano. Because of the pulp price drop, net revenue for this unit totaled 893 million reals, 19% down vis-a-vis -vis the same period of last year. And Paper and packaging sales amounted 492,000 tons in the quarter, a significant increase of 9% when compared to 4Q18. Net revenue of these business units were up 12% uh, on the same comparison base. Turning to page 5, after planned downtime for maintenance held in in July of 2019, the plant, pulp plant continued operating at a good pace, reaching a production volume of 413,000 tons in the quarter. We should mention that in 2019, the production volume was 1,542,000 tons, 7% higher vis-à-vis -vis 2018, and above the plant's nominal capacity, which is of 1,500,000 tons. The pulp production cash cost in the fourth quarter of 19 was 687 rels per ton, 2% down and 4% down when compared to the fourth quarter of 18 and the prior quarter respectively. The dollar denominated cash cost in the quarter was $167 per ton, which is a global reference. Now turning to page six, the coated board market recovered ground over 2018, which reflected, which is reflected in higher sales volume starting in the second quarter of the year. The recovery was consolidated in the last quarter, as we have already mentioned in the prior call. In the fourth quarter of 2019, coated board sales were up 17% vis-a-vis the same period of 2018, totaling 193,000 tons. Growth was driven mainly by higher sales to the overseas market, up 35% in the annual comparison. The coded board unit net revenue was 715 million rels in the quarter, 23% higher than what we had in the fourth quarter of 2018. In the year, coded board sales were up 12% and net revenue increased some significant 19%. Since 2018, Clubbing is dedicating efforts to geographical diversification and new product development. Such efforts bore material results over 2019 and give us great expectations for 2020. I now went then the section about Clubbing's operating highlights, and on page seven, we'll discuss some of the financial highlights. The company ended 2019 with a net debt of 14.4 billion rails. 
the reduction vis-a-vis -vis the end of September can mainly be explained by the FX rate variation, which affects the dollar-denominated portion of the debt. Our leverage, measured by the net debt EBITDA ratio, ended 2019 at 3.3 times the same indicators in, in dollars, which better reflects the company's debt, in our opinion, was at 3.2 times by the end of the year, the same level of the prior quarter. On the next page, we have our debt amortization schedule by the end of 2019. The main highlight on this page is the trend of the average debt maturity. A year ago, the average maturity was of four years. Thanks to our liability management efforts over 2019, average maturity ended at eight years in 2019. At the same time, the average cost of debt showed a slight drop in the same comparison base, and you can see the details in our release. Also worth mentioning is the company's robust liquidity position, which by the end of 2019 was of 11.8 billion reals against the loan maturities of approximately 900 million reals a year from 2020 to 2022, significantly mitigating the risk of refinancing the company. These uh, figures show relevant progress of our financial profile over 2019. The company is at a privileged level of liquidity and cost of debt, and we feel safe to move on with our ex expansion plans and as well as our plans to create value for shareholders. Now, turning to the next page, adjusted free cash flow, excluding discretionary factors and expansion projects, was of 679 million reals. Thanks to a number of actions and financial discipline, working capital in the quarter was down in 383 million reals, and that is a structural reduction. The company expects no investments in working capital for 2020. In 2019, adjusted free cash flow was 1.4 billion reals, equivalent to an 8.1% free cash flow yield in the year excluding one time off and non recurring effects on the working capital because of the prepayment of fees and financial expenses for liability management, adjusted free cash flow for twenty nineteen and in despite of the price scenario for pulps would be similar to that seen in twenty eighteen. The cash generation resilience reflects Clubin's business model, which is integrated and diversified. On page 10, a dividend. In 2019, Clubin has paid shareholders 957 million reals in dividends and uh, interest on equity. The amount represents a dividend yield of 5.4%. Dividends paid in the quarter totaled 294 million reals. On page 11, as I promised in our clubbing day, we will start reporting the company's ROIC, considering this is an indicator used by clubbing's management to make decisions on capital allocation. And despite of the challenging year in Pope and Craft Liner markets, ROIC in 2019 was 11.2%. After an important change in the return levels in the last decade, Puma 2 project, uh, along with capital allocation discipline and constant push for operating efficiency improvement, are driving the company's expectation to deliver higher structural returns in the next year or, or in the next years. Finally, on page 12, I will end my presentation with the development of Puma 2 project. In a survey from January 26, 2020, it was verified the project has reached 20% of the construction work for phase one in line with the original schedule for this project. About FUMA's two capex in the 4Q19, there was a total disbursement of 554 million reals in the year to date. Disbursements totaled 1.3 billion reals. For 2020, the estimated disbursement for Puma 2 is of approximately 3.8 billion reals. Now, Christiana, the other officers, and myself will be available to take your questions. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. We'll now start the Q&A session. To ask a question, please press star 1.
to remove your question from the queue, please press star 2. Our first question is from Danielle Sasson from Itaú BBA. Thank you very much, Cristiano and Marcos, for your presentation, and good morning, everyone. My first question on Pope, I would like to know if you are seeing an impact on the demands on when you talk to your clients in the past few weeks with the matter of the coronavirus in China and possible concerns about this problem in China. I think the investors are concerned about that. And are, are you going to have an impact in your logistics? We have seen news that this has been a little bit harder to uh, send uh, to ship your production or production in general. So I would like to hear from you what's going on regarding this matter. Second question uh, about your paper business in Brazil. You have increased your uh, paper share in the domestic market vis-a-vis -vis total sales in the company. That was significant in 2019. And if we compare here the box conversion business with the ABPO data, we see that you have gained market share over 2019. So if you can comment, if you still see room to keep increasing that integration or gaining market share in the country, or do you think that you are already um, at a good level of market share? And with that improvement and the demand of the domestic market that we are seeing in the margin, uh, how are you working on price increases in the domestic market? That, are you trying to do anything in the past few weeks? These are my questions, and thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Well, to provide you the best answer possible, we usually have the officers of the different areas answering. So, so Ad is our commercial director for Pope we will address, and then your question about paper and corrugated boxes, Flavio De Ganucci and Douglas Damasio will also answer. Okay, so that is, uh, Daniel, uh, well, thank you for your question. What we have seen in Pope after the coronavirus is that so far, what we have seen, what we have seen in terms of port shipments is similar to all events in the Chinese New Year. It is only natural that in the Chinese New Year shipments are down, but from now on, from this week on, we'll start seeing really how much coronavirus is going to be affecting port shipments because in some areas uh, the ports are closed and that could have some additional impact. And this impact is common in the Chinese New Year. For our clients in general, they are working normally. Um, 50 percent of our portfolio, the clients are working normally. They did not stop their plans, and part of them are coming back now on the 10th. So these are smaller clients, and, and maybe they find problems to, to get products during this period. But it's not clear yet. We have seen a drop in shipment. Of course, ports are working with less people, and we have a limit in, in terms of trucks. If the people can use trains or barges, they keep receiving the products, but those that need trucks are facing problems. We, we will start really having more clarity next week where decision makers will be back. Uh, today, we have a hard time finding people that make decisions in the company, so I believe that in next week, we will have a better idea that in, in addition to a regular uh, Chinese New Year, uh, how coronavirus is affecting the market at the moment. Thank you, Danielle. This is Flavio De Ganucci from Paper Business. Yes, in fact, we did have a good performance in the domestic market. We can separate the, the year into a relevant recovery. It was towards the end. Uh, portion of the year, and that is still on in the beginning of 2020. The growth that we estimate for 2020 will be in line with the market growth, not much more than that. There is a single exception, which is clubbing's in work in a very specific market, 
and it's, which is uh, the migration of other types of packages to ours. So we, I can highlight our growth in the cup market, also in the market of um, coated boards that are used to package uh, cans, uh, beer cans, and also coated board market that are directed for the food industry. Here we do have a potential to increase clubbing share because these are very specific products and we have them developed for specific applications as well. Now I'll turn the floor to Douglas. Hello, Danielle, this is Douglas and thank you for your question. Now about packaging, we did not gain market share in the year. If you follow that up, since the initial quarters, we are we were looking for profitability gains and we are following up the market growth. So in the first nine months of the year, the market was more moderate and in the last quarter, there was a strong growth. So in general, in all areas, we did follow the growth and were able to improve our profitability. Now, also related to that, we had no products, no markets that have contributed to that profitability increase. So both for boxes as well as bags, we have had initiatives going on for a while and now we are harvesting the fruits. So for instance, uh, boxes for the fruit industry, for the e-commerce and bags, uh, meal, coffee, bags, and these initiatives allowed us to gain margin, profitability, and also the, the price increase against inflation allowed us to gain profitability, but we did not gain market share. Thank you very much, very clear. Next question from Tiago Lociego, Bradesco BBI. Good morning, actually, this is Isabella. I have two questions. The first, it's a follow-up of the prior question about the price dynamics in China. Do you see the possibility of a threat, uh, you know, to have uh, to your prices that you have recently announced for China, and, and how is the pulp demand in Europe, considering the strike of the industry in Finland? Do you see an impact? Can you increase prices in the region? Although also you have high levels of inventories in China, or if you are going to have any type of replacement of the softwood by hardwood. The second question about Puma 2. I would like to understand uh, how is that potential decision to change the phase two of Puma 2 uh, uh, to switch a machine, to replace a machine for a coated board machine. Thank you, Gabriela. I will start with Soaris, who will talk about Pope, and then I'll come back and I'll talk about Puma too, okay? Hello, Isabella, and thank you for your question. About China prices, the increase that we have announced of $20 per ton was implemented. We were able to implement part of that increase in the first week of February with some uh, players that were operating, and part of that increase is still being discussed. It's difficult to find decision makers, as I said, but we do believe that part of the increase will be able to implement. But we cannot estimate yet if it's going to be the whole $20, but I would say that it could be something like $15. And we are having difficulties to, you know, be able to uh, deliver an invoice with a no price. So it's, it's Still too early to say the, what we estimate right now is 10 to $15 out of the 20 announced. Your, about your other question um, on the Finland strike that is affecting the European market, we see an improvement coming from the demand of our clients and tissue and so on. And there is an improvement in the mood regarding the demand. And on the other hand, also some pressure on supply because of this strike. In February, in the hardwood, we do not see any room to talk about a price increase. Obviously, for March, uh, 
the scenario could uh, turn possible of a price increase for that, then that's going to be analyzed in February. And in the software, that's where we have this already advanced. There is an increase of $40 announced. Let's see how much of that is going to be implemented in February. So our volume of softwood in Europe is short, is not too, too high, but we are doing that follow-up, and I believe that in March we might have some room for a price increase because of this strike in Finland. That's more or less how we see the market right now. February is this table, and with a possible upside for March. Isabella, I would like to add to this question on the strike in Finland. Obviously, we see that, and we are observing what's happening, and we know that the industry in Finland is going through difficulties, and we have been receiving constant requests and orders for paper so that we can help the clients that are not getting supply because of this strike. Of course, we are going to do all we can to cater to these clients. So there is a demand pressure. Obviously, it, this is not a good reason for anyone, a happy reason, but we will be there to help uh, all clients that we can. Now, about Puma 2, that decision of the second machine, and let me just remind you, the two machines in the approved project are for craft liner machines. The first one is the machine that we called Oka Liner, 100% uh, eucalyptus. Uh, that's the product already tested in several countries in the world and very well accepted in, in the uh, results that we had with clients that convert that to corrugated box. The second machine would have a higher weight that we could use the white top liner, and that machine has a period of time established by our engineering team, and that's going to be probably in the beginning of the second half of the year. We have a date to start address that decision if this is going to be a coated board machine or if it is really going to remain as a craft liner machine. This is a Clubin's discussion that is being held in a strategic fashion, taking into consideration market trends and market conditions, and as soon as we have any color on the subject, we'll be glad to share that with you. Okay, perfect, very clear, thank you. Next question in English from George Staffers, Bank of America. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the details. Um, two questions for you, one on cost and fiber supply, uh, and the other on you know global uh, paperboard and packaging markets. Uh, relative to the first question, uh, gentlemen, can you give us some update on the mix of your own wood versus third-party wood over the next several years, particularly as Puma 2 comes up, and how your forest resource will be able to meet your demand needs, both again over the next few years and then in consideration of your longer-term plan for Clabine and the additional uh, production capacity that you might be contemplating. Uh, the second question, can you talk to us about what we would call exit rates into the first quarter in terms of demand and pricing trends for coated board and craft liner, particularly as the global markets remain fairly mixed? Are you seeing any spillover of weakness in the global markets back to Brazil? Certainly from fourth quarter results, it doesn't look that way, but are you seeing any mixed trends in the first quarter? Thank you, and, uh, and good luck.
Thank you, George. We are going to separate uh, the answers. The first one is about the cost of fiber and a little bit of the supply cost and supply mix, and that's going to be with Marcus Evo, and we also have taught you that, you know, if needed, he will add his comments. After that, Flavio De Ganuti will talk about the markets. Hello, George, and thank you for your question about the supply mix between third-party wood and own wood. Clubbing has been communicating to the market already for a while that we have increased our third-party share in the total sales mix. Seizing good advantage, good opportunities uh, coming from third-party wood available, buying that third-party wood, and keeping Clubin's wood to supply Puma to. That increase of third-party uh, wood in Clubin's mix has already happened, and this is already reflected in our mix of own fiber and third-party Fiber, so that third party share, third party participation is already reflected in our costs. What we have to be careful is that in between quarters, because of the strategy of our forests, we might have an oscillation between our own mix and third party mix. But in, in terms of our structure, and this is really what matters, we are at a very close level of what Clubin will have in the next years. Therefore, the cost that we have is already the structural cost and trying to uh, complete this answer. When we analyze specifically the production cost for pulp, the company's expectation for 2020 is that the cash cost for pulp has the same level of the one that was realized in 2019 adjusted by the Brazilian inflation. I will turn the floor to Flavio and he will give you the second answer. Hello, George. Okay, now separating the two markets, let me tell you about the coded board market. Uh, this market has a very good uh, demand and supply balance. But going back to my first position, let me tell you the clubbing explores shares of the market that grow more than the market as a whole. So we uh, have a specialty markets such as um, liquidating package board, boards, um, markets that uh, cater to cans and liquid uh, packaging. So they have good demands, therefore we are optimistic in terms of future profitability. Now turning to the market of container board, specifically craft liner, we are coming from a long series and then that's because of what happened to the pulp market and also a downward pressure. Therefore, we had uh, signs of stability by the end of the year, but it's still with a few pressure. But in terms of uh, supply and demand balance, we are clearly at a limit situation, a limit position. Okay, of course, we have a Brazilian recovery here in the market, and also we have increase in exports. This is not delivering the first quarter a price recovery, but it is bringing a moderate optimism after the second quarter and on. Thank you, Flavio. Next question from Gabriel Galvão, Credit Suisse. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations on your results. I would like to follow up on the first question. Uh, what is your strategic position to tap into this possible growth over 2020, considering the Brazilian economy recovery, if you need to deliver Puma or if you have any com additional conversion greenfield project to work f to consolidate in the sector. Since 2018, we see news in the media that IP would be willing to sell their assets here in Brazil. I don't know if you consider those possibilities and if you can also talk about your idle capacity per segment, that would be interesting. And my second question is about the capital structure. Um, 
do you have any additional plan for the leveraging in case your leverage increases and goes over five times net debt over EBITDA? Are you considering any assets? Uh, in if you are, which? Thank you very much, Gabrielle. Well, I will start uh, with the first subject, which is the integration of Puma. This is something we have already discussed a few times in the past. I will say I will call it Puma One, the pulp paper pulp plant. This is a market plant, a plant for the market. We have no plans for integration. We are very happy in that market, and we are paying attention to growth possibilities in the future. Therefore, there's no integration for Puma One. What we do have is the new Pulp line, with, which we are calling Pulp for Puma Two. This is integrated in paper machines. And then, yes, Puma Two is going to be 100% integrated in paper. Uh, Puma One is market sales, and it's going very well like that. And now, about the Brazilian economy, we are attentive. We are paying attention. Uh, we are preparing ourselves for that. We have uh, already recovered some of our activities and plants that were working with reduced shifts in the third quarter of last year. All of that is at full speed. And we feel that trend uh, that we have seen and the end of last year, the, the trend is still there. Therefore, we have a design ready to cater to the recovery of the Brazilian economy. We are confident uh, the shipment of corrugated boxes last year in Brazil hit a record figure over 3.6 million of corrugated boxes. Uh, Brazil is still have installed capacity to meet the demand of a small growth, but Clubin and other players as well, of course, will be paying attention to investment possibilities in the industry. About the consolidation, I think it's more of the same. Clubin has to analyze any corrugated boxes, um, assets, either in Brazil or in Latin America, we are always paying attention to integration possibilities. But right now, you know, obviously we are during a going on a important investment cycle in the company, and it's not simple to have an M and A in the moment like that. Therefore, yes, we look at it, but. Uh, there are major difficulties to make sure that we would hold an M&A nowadays. Now, this is Marcus Evo about leverage. I know this is an important indicator, but we always look at leverage, side-by-side -side liquidity, and debt profile. So right now, uh, Clubin has the longest debt profile in its history. We have an average of debt maturity of eight years. The company sees a good window of opportunities in the capital market in Brazil and abroad last year. Therefore, we were able to reach that average debt maturity of eight years. We have a robust liquidity position that can face the next five years of maturities. And on top of that, we have Puma 2 project already fully financed. These are funds we have not disbursed yet, but they are already contracted. Therefore, we are safe, we feel safe uh, about our capital structure in the company and we do not foresee a scenario in which the company will uh, be at a risk and having to uh, reevaluate that. Thank you. Next question from Tiago Gea from Goldman Sachs. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your for taking my questions. I would like to follow up on the debt. Now we are going to have an increase in Puma's two expenses. It's going to be threefold more, right? So my first question is, 
what is your understanding for cash generation this year considering we are going to start at a lower pulp price and having to offset as higher expenses so what do you foresee for cash flow generation this year and also uh, it's still in the financial area of course there was an important extension on the maturity profile of the debt but i'm curious in the fourth quarter with the expenses with um finan with financial expenses that were reduced so what do you foresee for the next years in terms of modeling of these debts thank you tiago marcos evo is going to answer your questions Hello, Tiago. Let me um, address each one of your questions. Well, uh, the company does not provide guidance for cash generation. The first line of cash flow, you know, the EBITDA depends on price and the FX rate. And each one of you know, know and you have your own projections. What I mentioned in the clubbing day is that some of the lines of the cash flow, you know, we will have improvements in some of them clearly in 2020 when they are compared to 2019 one of them is the maintenance capex of clubbing and a clubbing day in clubbing day we gave you a figure we foresee that clubbing's capex as is uh, not considering puma to puma to uh, 900 million rows in 2020 which is lower than the level of 2019 i also mentioned in clubbing day that the line of cash of interest received in 2020 also is going to be lower than in 2019 considering 2019 that line was affected by that liability management work we did you have uh, some expenses one time off expenses and in the income tax uh, the, in the company's planning they have monetized an, a higher amount of credit in 2020 so in despite of not giving you the guidance for the bottom line in the cash in the cash flow just by these three topics i mentioned i can tell you that we expect improvements for 2020 about the accounting result for re reducing financial expenses in the fourth quarter that was affected by the fx variations so part of our debt uh, seventy to seven percent is a dollar denominated debt, and the final dollar in the third quarter was four sixteen and by the end of the year was four zero four o three therefore we have a financial revenue that brings down the total financial uh, expense but this is a, um, a matter of a competence uh this has no cash uh, impact the cash impact is what I mentioned when you compare that to twenty nineteen to twenty twenty Next question from Marcio Farigi, JP Bank. Good morning. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Most of my questions have already been addressed, but I have one about Puma. The figures that we have seen for the fourth quarter were uh, sound ones uh, about production and lower costs. And obviously, that comes from a comparison of a weaker third quarter, but I would like to understand if we can expect a run rate of over 1.6 million tons that we have seen in the fourth quarter as the new normal and also the cost levels that you have reported in the prior quarter can we take it as also the new normal from now on and a final question on pulp we have seen clubbing storing five six days of pulp uh, the level of inventory that you have today is already at, at an ideal level of, or do you have a possibility for cash generation in the working capital? These are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Marcio. So let's just start answering with Marcus Evo. He's going to talk about cost and if needed, our business unit, Francisco, can add to the answer and so I just, if needed, about the cash cost of both we expect that the cost in 2020 vis-a-vis -vis 2019 and then i'm talking about annualized costs not analyzing quarters because when we look at the quarters we have seasonality 
uh, general downtime that change dates, climate is analogies that also affect the wood. So my answer to be very clear is comparing the cash cost per ton realized in 2019 vis-a-vis -vis what we expect for 20. We expect the same level of costs and added the Brazilian inflation at the most. Francisco Rosalini will talk about production. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Marcio, and thank you for your question. About the operating performance of Puma, we are still going strong. We expect production this year keeps up the pace of the last quarter of 2019. And remember that in the last quarter, we had, uh, or last year, we had a 12-day downtime, and that has to be discounted from the annual projection. About inventory levels, uh, Suarez will, will comment. Hello, uh, good morning. About inventories, today we have the inventories at normal levels. Last year we had a reduction of five days. As you mentioned, we rebuilt inventory levels in Europe so that we could cater to our clients there. Therefore, we have our inventory levels balanced out, ready to cater to our clients, and our inventory levels today are more or less of 15 to 17 days, which is a normal level of operation for Clubin, considering our exports level or levels nowadays. Okay, so I just thank you very much, and thank you all. Next question from Gabriela Cortez, Banco do Brasil. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking my questions. Most of them have already been addressed, but there is one thing that I would like to go deeper. The strategy for corrugated boxes for 2020 is still to grow market and focus on profitability. I would like to confirm that. And about the sales percentage of pulp in the domestic market, you are working to increase that percentage, right? So I'd like to know if you are going to maintain that strategy for 2020. And can you tell me the margin difference between these products that are sold in the domestic and the overseas market so that we can understand if we have a margin gain with that increase of sales in the domestic market? And finally, about the yield management in 2019, do you still have anything for 2020, or are you, are you considering that you are at an optimum level? Thank you. Gabriella, please, I would like you to repeat the beginning of your last question. You asked about corrugated box, the other one about the pulp mix, and the third one we could not hear very well. The third one is about liability management. You already worked on it in 2019, and I would like to know if for 2020, you have anything else that you are going to do there or you, if you are at your optimal level. That's it. Perfect. Well, I would like to apologize about this rotation in answers. I don't mean to get you all confused, but the idea is to have you hearing uh, information from the officers that run the specific business unit. So I will start with Douglas, and then I'll turn the floor to Suarez and Marco Sivu again. Hello, Gabriela. This is Douglas, and thank you for your question. In January, we were at a pace that was very similar to last year's, and we should maintain our strategy for last year, which is to keep up with the market a growth without market share gain. Uh, as far as prices are concerned, since last year we have already a recovery above inflation, this year we uh, expect to keep up with the inflation labels, so that is to follow up uh, the inflation of the year. The profitability gain might come from a market niches growth. Uh, like I said, uh, like we mentioned in the clubbing day, and we believe that they will bring us added value and better profitability. Hello, Gabriela, this is Suarez, and I will address the question about the Pope domestic market. 
What we foresee right now is that we have reached the level of sales in the domestic market that is going to be very close to what was in the fourth quarter. Therefore, we do not see any major changes in that share of the domestic market, except in the fluff and softwood products because they have a higher impact in terms of exports. And with the Finland strike, we believe that we might have a stock out and there is an opportunity to gain market share, whether in fluff or bales of uh, softwood. But in hardwood, we foresee a substantial, we don't see any substantial changes vis a vis fourth quarter. About margins, obviously the domestic market allows us to have a better margin because we do not have international expenses and spreads that we have with clients in Europe. We have more economic freight here in Brazil, and this is priced by FOAX. Therefore, it is the same European price with the lower expenses. Therefore, we have a better margin condition when compared to the international market. Gabriela, this is Marco Zivo about the liability management. Uh, in 2019, we hired over 25 billion rails in financing, we have access to different sources in Brazil, abroad, the capital market, and that has resulted in a high bar today. Our average maturity uh, that is of eight years at a very competitive cost. Clubbing's treasury area is paying attention to the financial market, and they do that every day. If any opportunity arises, we'll go after it, but it's very challenging because we are in a very good level right now. That is great, thank you. Next question in English from George Staffus from Bank of America. Mr. George, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, thank you for taking the follow on late in the call. Um, question on packaging and e-commerce uh, for Flavio and, and Douglas. When we've seen e-commerce grow as a percentage of the market, we've seen a multiplier effect on box shipments. Certainly that was the case in the U.S. and I think to some degree in Europe as well. What would you estimate is the percentage of e-commerce right now in the Brazilian market as a percentage of the overall targeted market? And do you have enough capacity and cargated to supply what would be an accelerating rate of box shipments if e-commerce really picks up in Brazil as it has elsewhere. Um, that's my primary question. And then secondly, could you update us on what might be your worst case leverage um, ratio uh, from where it was in prior presentations um, as we get through the, the Puma 2 uh, investment cycle? Thank you, and again, good luck in the quarter. George, thank you very much for your questions. I will start. You, you mentioned Flavio, he's just by me, and he went to the answer. And Douglas also may help us. But let me tell you a little bit about our vision and about our expectations regarding e-commerce in Brazil. Clubin has been preparing itself in a very extensive fashion to this new reality, which is already established, uh, which are the e-commerce sales with a two-digit growth. But percentage-wise, and the total retail in Brazil, although this is low, and Clubin has some uh, fronts at e-commerce directly with our clients, is one of them. They define, uh, the large clients define how we are going to supply them and via their own website. We also have a largest e-commerce partner in Latin America that's exclusive partner of Clubin, and we supply this largest company, largest e-commerce company with 
the box. We send them the, the boxes so that they can cater to their own clients and send and ship their products. But also the partners sell Slabin boxes in the marketplace. And they sell those boxes for anyone who's interested. Also, we have what we call the apple of our eyes, as, as we say. It's clubbing for you. This is a new sales channel that is fully ours. That was a successful bet. Uh, four young guys left clubbing and they were tutored by our packaging officers in order to create a sales channel. And I would like to invite you all to access that website. It is uh, clubbing for you. And we are showing there how much we value this business in the future. So now I'll turn the floor to Flavio and Douglas. And if to see if they have anything to add. Well, but uh, I, I think they don't have anything to add, but if you are not happy about my answer, we can come back to it. But just to, to bring to you this trend and this vision, we do see a huge potential to grow vis-a-vis -vis the traditional retail, and especially with uh, the consumption of the corrugated boxes. I will turn the floor to Marcus Ivo now, and he will answer the other question. George, I would like to remind you that the debt profile of Clubin, which you already mentioned, and also Puma 2 is already fully financed with signed contracts for phases 1 and 2. Also, as a reminder, I should say that Clubin has no covenant in its financial debt. And despite of not giving a specific guidance for a worst scenario in terms of leverage, our projections show that in a in a greater stress scenario, leverage in this growth cycle would be much lower than the peak that Clubin has had during Puma's one construction. And we also believe that based on our projections, we'll go through this investment cycle without no downgrading in our ratings at the rating agencies. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you all. Excuse me, if there are no further questions, I would like to turn the floor to Mr. Cristiano Teixeira for his final remarks. Very well. Now I will tell you a little bit about my perception for the first quarter of 2020, the strong shipment of paper packaging that we have seen by the end of 2019 should be maintained, providing us a good expectation uh, in the beginning of this year. As far as the, the international market is concerned, a stabilized uh, FX rate will allow us to have good exports, and also we expect to have a beginning of price recovery in the product portfolio of Clubbing. I would like to stress that we are still confident on our path that is focused on innovation, sustainability, and discipline. Thank you very much and see you in our next call. Clubbing's conference call has ended. Thank you very much for your participation and have a nice day. Thank you.